Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that everybody is having an awesome week so far and ready to learn for this IELTS lesson. We are focusing on IELTS reading section. Specifically, we will look at a passage about a wedding tradition in a country. And uh, the reading section, of course, uh, has three passages for the academic IELTS, and it has three sections for the general IELTS. The third section of the general IELTS is very similar to the academic uh, reading passages. And uh, so we are looking at this passage from our academic uh, sample exams. And of course, it will be excellent learning for everybody. You will learn strategies for different kinds of questions. You will learn new vocabulary and you will get a chance to practice uh, your reading. Welcome Carolina, our chat moderator. Nice to see you in the class. Hi Baljeet, good to see our members joining in. Welcome Chayan Kip, Gashemi. This is a subscribers chat class, so if you'd like to join the uh, chat, make sure to subscribe to the channel, click the uh, bell, the notifications, so you know when these live classes are happening. Uh, this lesson, this material is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there. For general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have lots of information for you, practice exams, strategies and videos, much, much more. And this is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background. We will use this today. Uh, to practice our reading. So it's a great idea to join our premium package. You click this big red button right there, just uh, above my head, uh, to join our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access, and we are a certified IDP and British Council uh, Test Registration Center. We are certified British Council agents, so you are in excellent hands with us getting ready for your test. Nice to see so many of you joining in on the class. For the uh, academic, or sorry, for the general IELTS, visit us here. It's gieltshelp.com with the green background. Again, click this big red button uh, to join our premium package there. Of course, uh, we have apps that you can use as well. Our apps are Academic uh, IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. Those apps will link to the website, so make sure to use those. And on the websites, not on the apps, but on the websites, you can use this code today, Practice9, for a 20% discount off of our premium package. So when you're in the checkout form, just click use discount code and then type in practice nine to get that 20% savings. Again, it doesn't cost a lot of money and it is excellent for your IELTS uh, preparation. So make sure to use it. Uh, if you end up with some questions about the IELTS exam or about our products, uh, don't worry, we're here to help. Just send us an email to adrian at aehelp.com. That's my name, adrian at aehelp.com, and we will gladly answer questions about English, about IELTS, or our websites, our apps. So definitely uh, don't hesitate to uh, send us your inquiries. Uh, students, our schedule, uh, you can get our schedule by uh, joining us on our Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help or G IELTS help. Uh, of course, you can see our uh, live stream schedules uh, for this YouTube channel on the channel. So again, make sure uh, to subscribe when you get a moment. Uh, we will have another class after this one. That class will be uh, speaking part two where everybody will be able to join and then speaking part three and again this class right now it's uh, not just for members it's also for subscribers although I'll keep a special eye out for our members uh, during the reading part subs 
subscribers uh, class. So uh, definitely uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can always watch our latest HD video releases on the channel when we're not doing these live classes. We've got a good one for you that we released just the other week. I put the link into the chat, so uh, check that out if you are uh, available and you have a bit of time. Okay, everybody, so uh, without further ado, uh, let's get into today's uh, reading. This is a new uh, reading passage uh, for uh, today, and uh, this is coming from one of our newer exams that is in uh, production. Uh, Baljeet, I see that you have a question about reading and I'm happy to answer questions about the IELTS reading section. So you can go ahead and put those into the chat. I will answer them as I see them while we're going through this reading passage. Uh, this reading passage <clears throat> is uh, the exact same level of difficulty as what you can see in the IELTS exam. Uh, when we create these exams, we match the exam with the difficulty of the real IELTS exam. That's important to remember, um, especially when you're studying the reading listening section. There are a lot of materials online that tend to be a bit easier than the real IELTS, so be careful what kind of materials you are learning from so you're not surprised uh, during the IELTS exam. Uh, Yash, multiple choice questions. I think we have some of those today. Yash is asking, how do we solve multiple choice questions? And uh, we have a few of those here at the end. So 36 to 40, we have some multiple choice. And I will show you the strategy uh, to solve those ones as well as we go along. Okay, let's go step by step. So uh, when you are uh, sitting uh, doing the reading section, uh, your very first step always when you see a passage uh, is to look at the title of the passage and then read it. Uh, so Tapestry of Lives, let's do this. So this is again reading, so make sure to read. Okay, don't just listen to me, but read with me as well. And if you have the chance, students, read aloud so you can hear yourself, okay? A loud reading uh, is very important. That means you're reading not just inside of your head, but you're actually verbalizing your reading nice and loud. It's very effective because you're using the muscles of your face, your tongue, uh, you're listening to yourself, and uh, it's much more effective than just reading quietly. So you should read aloud as much as possible. So throughout this lesson, uh, be sure to read aloud, okay? All right, uh, so Tapestry of Lives, the Kyrgyz Tush Kyrgyz, whatever that means, right? So uh, I am not familiar with this term. I can tell you that it's uh, not English. It's some kind of a foreign term or word or name. Um, and uh, I'm not too worried about that right now. Okay, in the IELTS exam, especially for section three of the general or passage three, uh, the reading is more difficult. So in the IELTS exam, the reading passages get more and more difficult as you go along. Okay, usually the first reading is the easiest and the last reading is the most difficult. And this is a section three or a passage three. So this is going to be kind of the most challenging uh, reading passage in this test. But that doesn't mean that it's impossible and it doesn't mean that you can't get a good score. You can definitely get a good score as long as you stay calm and stick to strategy and you know what you are uh, doing, okay? So uh, here uh, we observe the title. Okay, first of all, we look at uh, this tapestry of lives. All right, um, so let's try to figure out what that means. Anybody know the meaning of tapestry? So what does the, what does the word tapestry mean? It's a kind of an old English word and it's a type of object. I'll give you a hint. Um, anybody know what tapestry means? Okay, what is that? So, 
what do you what do you think tapestry means? It's kind of it's not a pastry, Chai and Kip. Sanjay says it's the tip of painting, I think. You're kind of on the right track, Sanjay. Baljeet says Mother Google knows it. Yes, and other people know it too, Baljeet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Calvin Yu says it's artwork on cloth. Very good. Yeah, it's kind of like a painting that's made of cloth. So a tapestry is uh, a cloth artwork. Okay, uh, kind of like a painting on cloth, okay, that you hang on your wall. So then, uh, good, hopefully we get this information. If we don't, that's fine. Even if you don't understand this uh, during the IELTS test, you're still okay, don't panic. There will be more steps that will help you to understand this information. But for right now, uh, tapestry is a cloth that's uh, kind of like a painting. It has images on it and it's tapestry of lives. Now, obviously something like this would have a lot of work involved. So a lot of effort to create uh, tapestry. And it's obviously some kind of special uh, type of tapestry. So uh, you should know that when you see this semicolon, it means that this second half, so this piece here, is kind of like a definition or an explanation of whatever comes before it, okay? So what I'm saying basically is, even though I don't know this word because it's a foreign word, it is somehow connected to this concept here, the tapestry of lives, okay? It's very important that you understand the use of punctuation in English. Understanding punctuation in English can really help you to understand content, okay? Everybody clear on that? Can I get a couple of thumbs up if you understood what I said there? So once again, just briefly, when you see this kind of a, a colon, okay, it means that this part here, whatever's here, is connected or a definition of that part there, okay? All right. Sanjay says, thumbs up. Jose sh says, sure. Uh, Carolina says, okay. All right, so now I know that I'm going to be reading about a special kind of tapestry. It's the Kyrgyz Tushkiz. I'm sorry if I don't pronounce that correctly, but again, in the IELTS, don't worry about pronouncing words in the reading perfectly. It's not important. What's important is that you answer the questions correctly, right? So. All right, um, so step one, I read the title, okay? And then step two, to get some more information, I look at the questions, all right? So here, I have my first set of questions. It says, choose no more than one word uh, from the passage. So I have to pick out one word from the passage to uh, answer the questions. Okay, and this type of question, it's good for me to read it before the passage because all of this information that I have here, so all this information is somewhere in the passage. <clears throat> and, and so this will give me some more ideas about the passage before I read it. Now, I'm not worrying about understanding it perfectly. I'm not worrying about guessing answers. The only step that I take here is I quickly, smoothly read these questions to get a better idea of what this tapestry of lives could be about, okay? So let's do that now, okay? So everybody read with me as I read these, okay? <clears throat> so question 28. All right, here we go. Uh, nations and cultures around the world have something that are carried out at weddings, such as the breaking of the glass at Jewish ceremonies. Okay. Uh, translated as edges of felt, the tushkiz is generally made by hand and hung on a uh, something. Okay. A symbol of pride among the Kyrgyz people, Tushkiz are very 
something objects as they reflect particular interests of the couple and what is meaningful to them okay so just reading 28 29 30 I start to get a little bit of an idea of what this uh, passage will include um, definitely some kind of celebrations traditional objects weddings okay so those are the words that I start to collect or see in my head so I start to think about okay this passage will have information about traditions uh, weddings okay ceremonies objects all right so it will have those uh, pieces of information in there okay so let's uh, keep going let's keep reading um, these questions uh, 31 another interesting aspect of the tush kiz is that its symbolism can also reflect something important such as when they include symbolism associated with the cotton industry. For decades, the inclusion of the Soviet hammer and sickle symbol was commonplace on Tushkiz. This showed the couples something for the Soviet rulers. Okay, so a little bit of uh, 20th century history, Soviet Union coming into the picture. Uh, the Chimel Dick is a special area inside the yurt which is hidden behind a something and in front of the Tush Kiz. Okay. Uh, in addition to its usage as the backdrop for the wedding ceremony, the Tush Kiz also represents a portion of the something brought to the bond by the woman. Commonly orange and red in color, the Tushkis also include patterns on the inside of the tapestry that are something in their detail. Okay, so it's definitely about this tapestry. It's an important object. This object is connected to uh, ceremonies and it also reflects history. Okay, so traditions, weddings, ceremonies, Specifically, the Tush Kiz, I don't even know how to spell that, I-Z there. Uh, the Tush Kiz, which uh, reflects uh, family and history, importance. Okay, so I got this much from reading these questions. Now, of course, in the real IELTS exam, this is happening very, very quickly. So you read the title, you think about, okay, what is this? Why is this? How is this? And then when you read the questions, you read them nice and fast and you think about these, uh, these details. Now, students, before we get ahead of ourselves, I know that many of you are thinking this and you're like, well, we only have 20 minutes um, to answer the reading passage. And I know that, I know that you have 20 minutes. And 20 minutes does not seem like a lot of time it's exactly because 20 minutes seems like a short time that you have to use good strategy okay just skimming and scanning and searching for answers you run out of time all right 20 minutes is not enough to mix and match answers between the questions and the passage so you have to use good strategy and for those high band scores so for scoring a band seven or eight or nine those highest band scores you do have to read and you have to understand mostly what you're reading okay all right so um Let's take a look at uh, other uh, questions as well, okay? Uh, multiple choice, this is the one that you were thinking about, right? So uh, let's take a look at uh, multiple choice. Number 36, um, how many sides, okay, so before I get ahead of myself, so multiple choice strategy, okay? Let's talk a little bit about that, okay? So multiple choice question strategy. 
Okay, first of all, so we'll definitely get to these questions today and we'll answer them together, okay? So the first step with multiple choice is that when you're in the reading passage, before you read, before you read, uh, only read the questions, okay? I mean, uh, do not, do not read the answers because most of them are wrong and confusing. So it is a waste of time and uh, it can actually lead you to lower scores because you're confused by the answers, okay? So we only read the questions, all right? Okay, so let's look at number 36, all right? Now I can see quite a bit of chatter in the chat. Students, one really important uh, tip for practicing for the reading section as well as when you do the reading section is make sure you stay focused, concentrate on what you're doing, okay? It's very important. You have to be able to concentrate. Um, in some way, uh, the um, IELTS reading section is also testing your ability to focus and concentrate on the information without thinking about your latest Instagram post or what you had for breakfast or what movie you're going to watch tonight. So. Um, you have to focus, okay? It's one hour in the reading of intense focus. Okay, so let's stay focused here. Uh, how many sides of the Tush Kiz lack a border? Okay, so uh, in this question, I can figure out that, okay, this Tush Kiz is kind of like a painting, right? So it's like this. It's going to have four sides. One, uh, two, three, uh, four. And a border means it's going to have something around it, like uh, like this, okay? And I'm guessing that uh, there is no border on some of these sides. I don't know how many, but I'm sure we'll find out, okay? All right, so again, I'm explaining this, but of course in the real exam, this is in my head. I'm visualizing this because in the reading, it's very important to see the information. This is a very visual information. Uh, that we're reading here, so you have to really see it. Um, and then uh, the next question is, what is the main point of the Tush Kiz? So what is the purpose, right? So what's the main point? Um, what does the Tush Kiz represent? All right, and I'm sure some people in uh, some of the uh, former Soviet regions uh, like uh, Uzbekistan, for example, or Kazakhstan, will have an advantage here because they probably know a little bit more about what the Tush Kiz might be. Um, all right, uh, why aren't Tush Kiz often sold? Mm -hmm. All right, and today, where is the cultural practice of the Tush Kiz most common? All right, so we're looking at these uh, multiple choice questions. And when you're looking at these multiple choice questions, think about them as statements, okay? So when you read how many sides of the Tushkiz lack border, um, we can paraphrase this. So we can think about this as a statement and we can say it in another way. So for example, when I'm thinking about this in the IELTS exam and I'm reading this, in the reading, I think that this will come up something like this. Um, so uh, the number of sides does not have a border. Okay. So in the reading, it's probably not going to be a question. It's going to be a statement and it's going to write this number of sides uh, does not have a border, do not have borders. Okay something like that. Um, for number 37 in the reading, so number 37 is what is the main point of the Tush Kiz? Um, how do you think the author might write about this? So how do you think the author might write this in the actual reading passage? What is the main point of the Tush Kiz? So what I'm doing here is I'm basically paraphrasing the uh, question into a statement. So give me a 
Give me a statement that paraphrases this question, and this is another step to the strategy of multiple choice questions, okay? All right, so number two, uh, in multiple choice questions, think about the questions as statements. Paraphrase these. Because in both the uh, reading and listening sections, questions uh, or multiple choice questions, we can say, are usually uh, paraphrased statements. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? What I'm saying there? That's very important because. When you kind of train your brain to think this way, you will uh, see the answers much easier in the text or in the listening section for the multiple choice, you will hear them a lot better, okay? Um, all right, unboxing masala says the lead purpose of the tush kiz is absolutely the lead or a little bit more natural English unboxing masala is the main purpose, right? So the main purpose of the uh, Tush uh, kiz uh, is dot dot dot. So yeah, that's probably how we're going to uh, see it. Very good, nice unboxing masala. That was good. Okay, um, what does the tush kiz represent? Okay, how do you think you're going to see that one in the reading? Something like the tush uh, kiz mostly shows something, right? Yeah, Gurpreet, exactly, shows. Now, Gurpreet, make sure that you're thinking in full sentences, okay? So, full sentences. The tush kiz mostly shows, all right? Um, why aren't tush kiz often sold? In the reading, we will probably see this as uh, the uh, tush uh, kiz uh, can rarely be purchased because, for example, right? That's another way to say they aren't often sold. The tush kiz can rarely be purchased because. Okay, so looking at it from another way. All right, um, so think about the paraphrasing, very important, okay, very, very important. Now, this is a physical object. We're talking about a cloth that's kind of like a painting. So it's very visual, okay? Make sure to visualize, right? See the picture, see the images that we're reading about, okay? All right, everybody, so let's do this. Uh, let's read. Let's read this together, okay? We're going to do one run through together. We're going to do one reading together and then I will give some students a chance to read and we'll talk about the text and then we'll get to answering these questions. So get ready everybody. Um, we're going to read here, okay? Uh, follow with me. Now I know the print is a little bit small. Let me see if I can help you out here a bit. It'll become larger, but uh, I think it'll be easier for many of you, especially for those of you that are on mobile phones. So let's do this. Okay. All right. And I think this will help you uh, to read with me a little bit. Okay. Uh, is that better, everybody? Can you see it better? I'm guessing people that are using mobile phones will say, hey, yeah, that's that's a lot easier on my eyes. I can see that better now. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, yeah, when you're reading, make sure that you, you know, you do as much as you can to make it uh, a little bit easier, all right? Okay, Chai and Kip says much better, <laughs> all right. Okay, um, so then uh, let's do this. Uh, read with me, okay? Students, if you ever have questions or you say, hey, Adrian, the text is too small, let me know. We live in the age of technology. I can help with that, okay? All right, here we go. So when you read, read from the top, remember to visualize. So we should see, we should picture this, uh, this uh, Kyrgyz uh, Tush Kiz, okay?
Okay. Uh, Kyrgyz, of course, is from Kyrgyzstan, I believe. Okay. So here we go. Uh, let's read. Um, cultures around the world have wedding customs, both uh, modern and traditional. These can be actions such as the breaking of glass at Jewish ceremonies or the sawing of a log at German weddings. Customs can also be gifts such as the Fijian custom of the groom presenting the bride's father with a sperm whale's tooth. In the Central Asian nation of Kyrgyzstan, one important custom is the gift of the traditional tush kiz. Let's keep reading, students. So just follow with me. Just read with me, okay? Tush kiz, literally translated as edges of felt, are elaborate wall hangings or tapestries. They are made by hand by the bride's mother and grandmother and often take many months or even years to make. They are given to the newly married couple as a symbol of their union and as, as a symbol of their pride in Kyrgyz history and tradition. Okay. Tushkiz are deeply personal. While in the past these tapestries reflected general social interests in the form of ancient themes such as religious and cultural symbolism, in the 20th century the custom moved towards incorporating the particular interest of the couple and what was meaningful to them. However, cultural symbolism is still common. For example, imagery associated with the cotton industry is a common theme in 20th century Tush Kiz because the cotton industry was of such immense economic importance, it had taken on cultural importance as well. Tush Kiz, especially during the Soviet period, were also opportunities to demonstrate one's support for the Soviet regime in Moscow. Oftentimes, Tush Kiz of the period would include communist symbolisms such as the hammer and sickle, which adorn the Soviet flag. They may also have celebrated Kyrgyz contributions to the Soviet Union, such as the region's role in the Federation's space program of the 1950s and 1960s. These elegant tapestries are more than just a wedding gift. They also play an important role in the Kyrgyz wedding ceremony. The bride on the wedding day sits in a chimladik or curtained off area inside a special yurt in front of the tush kiz, embroidered by her loved ones. The tush kiz acts as the backdrop to the wedding ceremony, symbolizing the union of two individuals as well as two families. Furthermore, it constitutes part of the dowry the bride brings to the marriage, and after the wedding it takes a special place in the yurt house of the newly married couple. The tush kiz themselves are quite large. In general, they measure approximately six feet tall by 12 feet wide, or about two meters tall by three meters wide. Notably, they are almost always highlighted by orange and or red tones, including the outer edge, which is generally a solid color, as opposed to the diverse color palette and intricate pattern details of the interior of the tapestry. One interesting aspect of the tush kiz is that the outer border traces only three of the four sides of the fabric. The bottom side is borderless. The reason for this is based in the tapestry's ceremonial aspect. The tushkiz is not primarily a piece of art, though 
it is certainly beautiful and worthy of aesthetic appreciation. Rather, its primary purpose is as a framing of the bride and then the married couple. That is, the body and especially the head of the bride and eventually the groom are an integral part of the tushkiz. The fabric itself acts as the cultural foundation for the couple. It is literally and figuratively their background. It is where they come from and who they are. And yet they sit facing outwards from the tapestry as if their background does not define their future. Due to their personal nature, tushkis are not often bought and sold. Instead, they take on the role of family heirloom, something to be treasured. Sadly, it seems in recent years that the tradition of the Tushkiz is falling out of practice in Kyrgyzstan. The effects of globalization and urbanization have eroded the impact of traditional cultural practices. Today, the tradition of Tushkiz is continued primarily in the ever-shrinking rural communities of Kyrgyzstan. While big cities may often economic prosperity may offer economic prosperity it is also important to remember where one comes from if we only look forward we miss the rich cultural tapestry lying behind us figuratively or literally okay uh, so good we read that now we're ready to answer questions but students um, really good practice of course uh, when you're doing your IELTS preparation is to read the article twice, three times, four times, even, um, or I should say, especially if you did not understand it the first time, or if you had difficulty visualizing it, if you had difficulty following with the information. When you're preparing for the IELTS, you should read it more than once, just so you have clarity, okay? And I'm going to do that with you now. So I'm going to reach out to students and uh, we will read this again together. And while we read this, we will uh, talk a little bit about the content and then we will answer the questions, okay? So uh, I will be taking some volunteers for reading and this will give everybody a second chance to read, read with your fellow students, okay? Uh, to volunteer for reading, we are going to use our website, aehelp.com. And uh, in your My Student account, you will have uh, a student a partner speaking button. We use this for the speaking section as well. Uh, make sure that you turn on the microphone and uh, you enable your speaker and microphone in your browser. Let me show you how to do this, okay? Subscribers, members, check this out. This will be fun. This will be interactive. Um, let's get to it. So <clears throat> here is, again, our Academic IELTS website. You can join uh, the website by clicking this big red button there, okay? It's a one-time payment for lifetime access, so it doesn't cost a lot. We're an IDP British Council partner, test registration center. You're in great hands with us. We are literally world leaders when it comes to online IELTS learning. Maybe more students learn IELTS with us online than anywhere else. So check us out, uh, join there, and then when you join, um, you have a My Student account. You can try this for free by clicking that green button as well, okay? And then uh, when you're in your My Student account, you will see computer-based practice exams, uh, full online interactive course. Uh, you're going to see uh, practice exams that you can print, uh, PDF, there's lots of them. Uh, you're going to see lesson videos for every section of the IELTS exam, audio CDs that you can listen to. But right now, we are focusing on this part here. It's the student partner speaking. We click on that button that's just right above my head there. And you accept that you will be polite and professional when you're using this service. And then you get into this page here uh, where you can interact. We have Renusha, Brijesh, Shubham, Jose, Sunantha in here and I'm sure we'll have more people joining soon. Um, and then you see this envelope here, okay? 
uh, it's a blue envelope. Uh, you will see my name as uh, master, master, like that. Um, and uh, just click on the blue envelope beside my name and then send me um, a, a message, say I want to volunteer or I would like to read and then I will let you uh, read and we'll talk a little bit about uh, what you read. Okay, so send me a message. I'm looking for those pings, those messages. Okay. And as soon as I see that, I'm going to see a little number come up beside your name that you want to read. Um, and then uh, we can start. So again, go to aehelp.com. Uh, join by clicking the red button or the green button. The green button lets you try this for free. Uh, the free version of our course, by the way, students, has lots of help and information for you as well. Okay. So, all right. Uh, let's start with uh, Baljeet today. Baljeet, I know you didn't get a chance to interact yesterday. So, are you ready? And I see volunteers now. That's fantastic. Okay. I'm looking up because I have, uh, somebody's asking, why am I looking up? I have multiple screens so I can see what's going on. That's why I'm looking up. Okay. All right, Baljeet. Hello, sir. Hi, Baljeet. How are you? I'm fantastic, sir. How are you? I'm fantastic, too. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> All right, Baljeet, are you ready to read a little bit? Yeah, sure, sir. I'm ready as I'll ever be. All right, that's a good way to be. You are prepared. Okay, so um, I've brought up the uh, the reading. Um, so you're going to read the title and uh, the first paragraph. Whenever you're ready, start with Tapestry of Lives. Okay, sir. Tapestry of Lives, the Kyrgyz Tushkiz cultures around the world have wedding customs both modern and traditional these may be actions such as the breaking of glass at jewish ceremonies or the sawing of a log at german weddings custom can also be gift such as the fijian custom of the groom presenting the bride's father with the sperm with a sperm whale's tooth in the central asian nation of kyrgyzstan one important custom is the gift of the traditional tushkiz good so obviously uh, baljit this is the introduction right it's the introductory paragraph right yes yes sir. okay so it introduces the kind of main idea of this passage or the concept of this passage um, what is that so what's in in one simple sentence uh, what what are we going to be looking at in this passage so what is the the idea of this passage uh, I think the main idea of this passage is uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the tradition or modern tradition and uh, old traditions and it also discussed about the two or three. Uh, you're on the right track, Baljeet. Now, simplify, right? So when you have this question like, what is this paragraph about? Then really simplify that. So try to answer that question in as few of words as possible. So can you try to answer that for me one more time, but just in a lot less words? So what is this paragraph about in a very simple sentence? It is about uh, marriage traditions. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Marriage customs or wedding customs, right? Wedding is a little bit better to, to say. So it's about wedding customs, old and new, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and what's the thesis statement of this um uh, of this introduction the thesis statement now Baljeet's uh, very smart he's been in, in these classes lots so Baljeet knows that the thesis statement usually is the last sentence in the introductory yes. paragraph and it it's a very important sentence right Baljeet <laughs> yes sir. Uh, why why is the thesis so important Baljeet because sir, uh, 
<laughs> the writer will discuss this in further paragraphs. Exactly. So it's basically what he will discuss in further paragraphs. So what's the thesis statement of this introduction? It's a, a traditional Tash kiz. Yeah, so the full sentence would be in the Central Asian nation of Kyrgyzstan, one important custom yes. is the gift of the traditional Tashkiz. Exactly, right? So we know that this will be the focus of this passage. So students, it's a very important tip for everybody. Um, when you're reading an IELTS passage, pay special attention to the thesis statement. Make sure that you understand it. If you don't, then read it two or three times because that will help you to focus on what you're actually reading about for most of this passage, right? So don't just skip it or ignore it. And, oh, whatever, I don't understand it. If you don't understand it, you're in trouble, right, Baljeet? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, good. All right, uh, Baljeet, thank you for volunteering for the first paragraph. Um, and uh, hang in there because once we're finished, all of this will answer the questions, okay? Okay, sir, sure. <laughs> all right, thanks for volunteering, Baljeet. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye. All right, that was Baljeet. Um, very smart student, working very hard and improving uh, information acquisition, communication, English by regularly being in these classes. That's awesome. Okay, Brijesh, um, are you ready to read a little bit? So make sure that you're reading with your fellow students, okay? This is a chance for you to uh, read with your fellow students. Zarina, you're right. The thesis statement guides the whole story. And Carolina, thank you for giving a thumbs up. All right, here we go, Brijesh. Hello. Hi, Brijesh. Hello, Hello. so how are you? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? I'm doing great, sir. All right. Um, Brijesh, are you ready to read a little bit? Yes, sir. I'm ready. All right. So, Brijesh, whenever you're ready, start reading from uh, Tush uh, Kiz, literally translated as. Okay, sir. Okay, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Shall I read now? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Tush this case uh, literally translated as edges of felt are, el are elaborated uh, wall hangings or tapestries. They are made by hand by the bride's mother or grandmother and often take many months or even years to make. They are given to the newly married couples as a symbol of the union and as a symbol of their pride in Kirk's history and tradition. Very nice. Okay. Uh, so, by the way, viewers, um, Baljeet and Brijesh, the speed that they're reading is absolutely enough to finish the passage and answer all the questions in 20 minutes, uh, as long as you understand what you're reading. So, Brijesh, that's perfect. You don't need to read faster. You don't need to read slower. That speed is perfectly fine to finish this in 20 minutes. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, Brijesh, uh, what's the main point of this paragraph? It explains uh, how the thing is made, how the uh, tusk case is made. Not just how it's made, but what it is, right? Yeah, I, I agree with you. It focuses a lot on how it's made. So how it's made and what it is, right? So tusk case, how it's made, exactly. what it is. Okay, good. Um, when you read this, hopefully you actually see the grandmother and the mother of the bride working really hard for a long time to make this beautiful tapestry, right? Do you kind of see that picture in your head? Do you see the grandmother and the mother? Yeah working really yes, hard sir. okay good made by the hand yeah 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 and you should see that right mm -hmm. because you want to hold mm -hmm. that information in your head for when you get to the questions okay I'll get you to read one more paragraph here so go with Tish kids are deeply personal okay sir uh, Tish kids are deeply personal uh, while in the past these tapestries reflected general social interest in form of ancient themes such as religious and cultural symbolism in the 20th century, the custom moved towards incorporating the particular interests of, of the couple and was meaningful to them. However, cultural symbolism is still common. For example, Im imagery associated with the cotton industry is a common theme in the 20th century Tuskes because the cotton industry was of such immense economic importance, it had taken on cultural importance as well. Very nice. What is this paragraph about? Uh, it's about uh, the how it uh, uh, went into the industry, the cotton industry. Mm, that's just an example. 
<laughs> so the t that's just an example of what what can be on the tush kiz. So that's mm -hmm. not the right answer. Keep it simple. What is this? What is this tush kiz? So what is this paragraph about? So the the paragraph that you read before, it's, it's how how it's made, and this one is more about mm -hmm. the importance importance of tush kiz. Not really. Um, let's see if anybody in the chat can help. So let's open it up for everybody else. Uh, what do you think, students? So what is this paragraph about? It's very important that you understand each paragraph's main idea. Um, Brajesh, uh, because if you don't, then it's kind of missed information. You won't be able to find information in the paragraph, etc. Um, so uh, if you're uh, doing IELTS in a classroom or if you're learning it with a study partner, Brajesh, one really good practice is to read a paragraph like this with your study partner and then ask each other, like, what do you think this paragraph is about? Like, imagine I'm your study partner and um, you ask me what it's about. And I tell you, but you disagree. You're like, no, it's not, Adrian. I think it's about something else, right? Then you have to have the same idea, okay? Yes, sir. Um, so uh, if we look at the chat, um, then um, uh, Black Star says it's cultural symbolism and revolution. Zarina says social representation. Um, there's, so we're getting a lot of different answers, okay? So here, if I if you asked me what it's about I would tell you that it is about the contents contents oh okay. yeah yes, <clears throat> of the tush kiz right so what actually yeah. goes on it so you know when what what does the grandmother and the mother actually put into this tapestry oh. what, are the, what are the images mm -hmm. what are the pictures that they represent the cotton industry is one example so we might so when we look at uh, tush kids that were made in the last hundred years we will probably see pictures uh, or images of people working in the cotton field or with the cotton gin <laughs> Okay, so this is actually the content of it. So very important point here, Brajesh, is you have to understand the main idea. If you don't, you have to stop and look at it again carefully, okay? Sure, sure, sir. All right, Understood. on the other hand, very nice reading. So uh, Brajesh, your reading fluency, the speed of your reading is wonderful. Your pronunciation is wonderful. So focus a lot on improving your ability to understand the content of the paragraph, okay? Okay, sir, thank you, sir. All right, thank keep you. it up. Thank you for volunteering. Yeah. All right, that was Brajesh. Give Brajesh a thumbs up. Um, I see that Sanantha is volunteering as well. Sanantha, are you ready? Very smart of you, Sanantha, to uh, keep coming back to the live classes and volunteering. And I see that C. Sarani is in here volunteering as well. So hang in there. Uh, we're going to do some more reading. Sanantha, if you're ready, give me a sign. Give me a yes or a yep or ready as I'll ever be and then we'll get reading. Okay, thank you for the thumbs up, by the way, students, for Brajesh in the chat. I know it's quite, uh, you know, challenging to put yourself out there and read. All right. Uh, Sanantha, here we go. Hi, Sanantha. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Watching your video. <laughs> Not what are you doing? How are you doing? Oh, uh, <laughs> um, doing fine. All How right. Good. Thank you. Um, I'm glad you're watching the video, though. <laughs> that's uh, that's good. <laughs> All right, uh, Sanantha. So, are you ready to read? Yes. All right. So, uh, whenever you're ready, start with the Tush Kiz. Okay. Okay. Tush Kiz, especially during the Soviet period, were also opportunities to demonstrates one support for the Soviet regime. In Moscow, often times, Tuskis of the period would include communist, communist symbol, symbolize, uh, symbolism, such as the hammer and sickle, which adorns the Soviet flag. They may also have celebrated uh, could I, I cannot spell these words. It doesn't matter. Kyrgyz? Kyrgyz. Uh, 
contributions to Soviet Union, such as the region's rule in the federa uh, Federation's spread program of 1950 and 1960. Very nice. Oh, nope, nope, stop. That's a new paragraph. So before you jump to that paragraph, let's talk about this one for a second. So this paragraph that you just read, what is that about? This is about uh, Soviet about the uh, the the keep it simple. Uh, it's still about the, the Tush kids, right? So what the about the kids. what about the Tush kids in this paragraph? Is the in uh, is about the um, Italy latest communist. Uh, it's like uh, mm, it's, it's like the size of uh, it's a specific symbol. example Spec of the Tush kids mm -hmm. from the 20th century right so in the previous paragraph that Brijesh was reading about here um, Brijesh was reading about uh, the symbolisms and the images, so the content of the Tush Kiz. And it said that the Tush Kiz usually shows the history um, or the culture of the time, right? And then it gives this short example of the cotton industry. Cotton is, that cl is the clothing, right? The material for clothing, mm -hmm. it's the plant. And then here it gives a very specific example of uh, what the Tush Kiz had for contents during the 20th century. So the Tush Kiz is this uh, piece of uh, fabric, right, that looks like this, okay? And during the last hundred years, because uh, Kyrgyzstan was under uh, communist um, control, mm -hmm. it would have had the hammer that kind of looks like that, right? And then the sickle that kind of looks like that. Now I, I don't have the picture perfectly in my head of the communist uh, symbols, but I know it was something uh, like this. Okay, And then also the space program, so it might even have mm -hmm. some kind of a rocket ship uh, like that on the tapestry like that okay so we have a rocket ship there and so maybe something like that as well okay so that would be the the picture on this mm -hmm. uh, on this tush kiz so it's giving us this mm -hmm. specific image the specific picture in our yes. head did you get that from this paragraph yes. okay that's what you should see that's what you should understand from that okay all right, um, read okay. one more. So read from these okay. elegant. Okay. These elegant tapis, uh, tapis ties are more than just a wedding gift. They also play an important role in uh, the guest's wedding ceremony. The price on the wedding day site in a ceremony I keep going. Just keep, like, just keep going. Okay. Or a uh, certain of area inside a spe special use in front of the tourist case embroidered by her loved one. The tourist case are as a backdrop to the wedding ceremony, symbol symbolizing the union of two individuals as well as to families, furthermore, is constitutes part of the dowry, the bring to the marriage, and, and after the wedding, is take a special place in the youth house of the newly married couple. Very good. Okay, um, a very important tip. Sanantha, and this is for everybody else as well. When you're reading, especially during the real IELTS exam, do not stop for difficult words. So if you can't pronounce the word Kyrgyz or Chimaldik, or uh, if you can't pronounce the word embroidered, just read through it. The reason why is if you repeat the word, if you go embroider, 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 then your brain just gets stuck. And now all the information that you're reading is gone out the window. So the trick, 
during the real IELTS is just to read it or kind of almost even skip it because then mm -hmm. you can still get the main idea of the paragraph as long as you can read most of it you can still get a clear idea of what the paragraph is about but if you get stuck on the words and you keep repeating your brain keeps getting stuck then you lose the overall meaning does that make sense yeah okay so don't worry about one word you have to worry about the whole paragraph or the whole sentence okay. but not one word okay don't worry about so many so many times that's the problem that happens is students worry so much about one word that they lose the sentence or they lose the paragraph okay mm -hmm. um what is this paragraph about a gift for a couple of miles. The role of the tush kiss during the wedding. So this tush kiss, the way that it participates in the wedding, right? That's kind of what it what it's about. So um, you're close. You're close. Um, it means that basically when you have the couple, so you have the the groom the the man and let's put a hat on him so he's the man and then you have the woman and um, here's the woman during the wedding so we'll give her some long hair or something like that um, the tush kiss will be behind them like that okay so uh, that rocket ship that we had if it's a 20th century wedding would be here like that space program with the Soviet uh, sickle and hammer right there okay so it's kind of behind them like that during the ceremony that's what you should see when you're reading this okay mm -hmm. did you see that picture did you see this tapestry like a painting behind the man and the woman while they're getting married okay but i have never seen i have never seen uh, neither have i I've never seen this either. Um, I'm just getting this from the reading. So from reading, oh. for example, the word backdrop, okay? So okay. all of this information that I just showed you, it's there, the special yurt. A yurt is like their house. It says here, it's like their house. So you have the house like that, okay? It's like a yurt. You have the couple in front like that. And then you have the tapestry behind them like that. So the author does a good job of describing what this wedding ceremony looks like in this uh, paragraph. If you don't understand that when you're at home and you're looking at a passage like this, you need to stop, read it again, find new vocabulary that you don't know, def give, get it definition, and you have to stay focused until you can understand that paragraph, okay? Okay. All right, it's very important Thank for practice. You. Thank you, uh, Sanantha, for volunteering and putting yourself out there. Thank I appreciate you. it. Okay, keep it up. Thank you so much. Sir. Keep watching. Okay, bye, Sanantha. Bye. All right, so that was Sanantha. We've got Jose here and a little bit more to read. So, Jose, are you ready? Hopefully, you hung in there and you're ready to read more of the uh, paragraph. Uh, Cicerani, I see you there as well. Don't go anywhere because. Uh, there's still questions to be answered, so we're gonna keep going here. Okay, Jose, if you're still with us, give me a sign. Here we go. Alexander's space program was two paragraphs before when I was talking about the Soviets. Okay. Jose. Can you hear me, Good morning. Hi, Jose, I can hear you. You sound a little bit distant. Uh, good uh, afternoon, good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How about you, sir? I am doing fantastic, especially now that I know about the uh, Kyrgyz culture a little bit more. Um, so, uh, Jose, let's uh, do a little bit of reading. Are you ready? Yes, yes, of course. Let's All go. right. So, whenever you are ready, start from the Tush Kiz themselves. The Toshkis themselves are quite large. In general, they measure approximately 6 feet tall by 12 feet wide, or about 2 meters tall by 3 meters wide. Notably, notably they are almost always highlighted by orange or, or red tones, including the outer edge, which is generally a solid color as opposed to the diverse color palette and intricate pattern 
details of the interior of the tapestry. One interesting aspect of the tushkis is that the outer border traces only three of the four sides of the fabric. The bottom side is borderless. The reason for this is based in the tapestry ceremonial aspect. The tushkis is not primarily a piece of art, though it is certainly beautiful and worthy of aesthetic appreciation. Rather, its primary purpose is a framing of the bride and then the married couple that there is the body and especially the head of the bride and eventually the groom are an integral part of the tushkis. The fabric itself acts as the cultural foundation for the couple. It is literally and figuratively their background. It is where they come from and who they are. And yet they sit facing outward from the tapestry as if their background does not define their future. Their Very future. nice. Very nice. Nice reading. Okay, perfect. Again, that speed is just fine. You can get a nice high band score, 7, 8, even a 9 with that speed as long as you understand what you're reading. What was this paragraph about, Jose? Well, I think that they, they, uh, they are describing the Tushkis. What specifically about the Tushkis are they describing here? I mean, what it means for, for, the, for the couple. Yeah, the purpose, right? So simply put, the yeah. purpose, purpose of the Tushkis. And what is that purpose? So according to the author, according to this paragraph, what is the purpose of the Tushkis? Is it an art piece? Like, is it just, you know, a beautiful piece of art that says, hey, here's a beautiful piece of art? No, it isn't. It has a meaning for the couple. What is it? So what what is that purpose? I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> on. Oh, that's an honest <laughs> answer. I, I mean, I, I read a lot. It was pretty long. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty long. And it's very visual, so you have to visualize it, right? Um, there was this one part here uh, that was quite important. Um, it's It talks about the borders, right? So here the author... Uh, spends a bit of time talking about the outer border traces only three of the four sides and it says that um, the tush kiss although it's um, it's uh, a beautiful piece of art um, it says the primary purpose anytime you see this word purpose pay special attention to it because it's uh, you know it means the goal um, so rather its primary purpose is framing of the bride and then the married couple. So again, if you're visually picturing this, you see that this is kind of like a picture frame for the couple. So it has these three borders, sure. but no border on the bottom here, right? So when the couple are in front of this, so here's the man, here's the woman, I'm purposefully drawing some bigger just heads right now. So here's the man and here's the woman. Um, Imagine kind of like when you're at a photo shoot, right? And there's a, a background here. So this is kind of like their background. It's like they're in the picture, but they are in front of the picture. So they're going forward in time, away, making new history, right? So this Tush Kiz is like their picture frame. They are the focus of that picture frame, okay? So that's what the author is telling you. Uh, in this uh, passage okay but you're good you got most of the main idea and that should be enough to get most of the scores in the questions okay all right Jose thank you for reading we've got a little bit more to go and then we're into the questions so um, keep watching and you'll soon learn what these answers are okay Jose sure sure it's a pleasure thank all you, right sir. bye for now okay that was Jose also coming back regularly Excellent. Uh, Cicerani, um, let's see if you are ready. So are you ready? Cicerani. Yeah, so Tech World says it's kind of like a border for the couple, right? Very good. Exactly. It's like a border. Cicerani says, yes, I'm ready. Very nice. Yes, sir. Hi, Cicerani. How are you? Uh, I'm good, not bad, not good. So-so. <laughs> uh, Keep it simple. You're so-so. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing okay. 
<laughs> Usually we say, I'm doing okay, or I'm so-so. All right. I'm doing okay. All right, Cesarani, I've got a little bit of feedback, so make sure you're keeping your microphone away from other electronic objects. Um, okay, uh, Cesarani, can you read from here due to their personal nature? Whenever yeah, you're ready. Yeah. Yes, I can read it clear. Go for it. Due to their personal nature, the skis are now often bought and sold. Instead, they take on the role of family heirloom, something to be treasured. Sadly, it seems in recent years the tradition of the Tuskies is falling out of practice in Kyrgyzstan. The effects of globalization and urbanization have eroded the impact of traditional cultural practices. Today, the tradition of the Tuskies is continued primarily in the in the ever sinking rural communities of Kyrgyzstan. While big cities may offer economic prosperity, it is also important to remember where one comes from. If we only look forward we miss the rich cultural tapestry lying behind us, figuratively or literally. Very good. Okay, what is this paragraph about? Um, the paragraph tells about natural personnel of Kastaskis. Can you say that one more time? Uh, this is tells about personal nature of Tuskis. Uh, I, I can't hear the second or third word that you're using correctly, which is the key word. So it tells us what about the Tushkis? Uh, it's about personal nature of Tuskis. Personal nature? Yeah. Mm, Maybe. Not so much, I don't think. Um, okay, so let's take a different approach. This is the last paragraph, right? So this last paragraph is what in the essay? or in the passage. It's the conclusion, right? Oh, so yeah, right. the author is concluding the information here. And the author is talking about it as an heirloom. We don't say heirloom, it's an air heirloom. The H-E-I-R is pronounced as air, like A-I-R, heirloom. Okay. Heirloom. So it's an it. yes, exactly. So it's an heirloom, and uh, then it talks about globalization, urbanization, shrinking rural communities in Kyrgyzstan. So what is it really talking about? Mm, it's talking about um, the modern time Tushkis situation right it's saying that the tush kids is disappearing from culture in modern days okay that's kind of the focus of this so it's saying the tush kids is disappearing but it should be important to keep these traditions alive that's what the author is trying to say here so i i think you should understand this because i have a feeling that you do understand most of the words here so really try to pay attention to that key content of the ever shrinking rural communities it's falling out of practice so pay attention to those pieces okay really really okay, focus sir. all right thank you so much for reading hang in there we're gonna answer the question Cisarani. okay thank you sir okay bye for now bye all right um, so let's answer some questions and um, I'm going to get into these myself and then we'll open this up for the chat to help me with the questions today. All right, let's do this. So let's get into it. Uh, number 28, we've got 15 minutes to answer the questions, which should be lots of time, okay? Um, now in the real IELTS exam, you should have about 10 to 12 minutes to answer the questions after you read uh, the uh, passage. Thank you to all of the readers, by the way. You all did a wonderful job, so I'm doing a clap today for everybody. I'll do a thumbs up as well. So uh, thank you, Cisarani, Brijesh, uh, Baljeet, uh, Jose, all of our other readers, Sanantha. Uh, thank you for reading. 
that was fantastic. You're all lovely people. Okay, thumbs up to you. All right, um, so let's look at this. Um, number 28. Now, if you're doing a good job in the reading, you should not have to look at the passage for every answer. Some of these answers should come naturally by understanding the passage. Okay. All right, so let's look at 28. Nations and cultures around the world have something. This should be a noun because it's uh, following the word have that are carried out at weddings, such as breaking of the glass at Jewish ceremonies. Now, remember that here it is one word only. Um, so what do you think, students? What should be the answer to uh, question uh, 28? Uh, Nerilta says customs. Yeah, uh, customs, I believe they'll take that. Yeah, customs. Uh, and there's probably another word that they'll take. Baljeet says traditions. Yeah, and if we go back to the beginning, it says have wedding customs, right? So do use the same word as what is in the passage. Here they're using the word customs. And they use it again here. So use the word customs instead of traditions. But uh, they would probably give it to you for traditions as well, but use customs, okay? So it should be from the passage. So they're specifically looking for word from the passage. Okay, uh, number 29, uh, translated as edges of felt, the tushkiz is generally made uh, by hand and hung on a something. What is it hung on? Okay. Baljeet says wall. Okay. A lot of you are saying wall. That's kind of what comes to mind naturally for me as well. Now here I remember um, the yurt. Uh, okay, the yurt was like the house of the uh, couple, so hung on a wall, hung on a yurt. Now, these questions, they go in the order of the passage, okay? And um, uh, here, uh, we know that um, the uh, second paragraph talks about um, this concept, okay? So let's take a look. So the Tushkis translated it as as your felt are elaborate wall hangings. Wall hangings. So they're hung on a wall. Yeah, wall is good. Um, okay, don't over complicate. Here's wall. There are elaborate wall hangings, which means that they're hung on a wall. Absolutely. Okay. These answers, um, the nice thing about these answers is they come in the order of the passage. So they're hung on a wall. So good for those of you who said, yeah, that's wall. I don't need to go back. I remember that. It said hung on a wall. Uh, number 30, a symbol of pride among the Kyrgyz people. Uh, Tushkis are very something objects as they reflect particular interests of the couple and what is meaningful to them. Okay, so very something objects. Uh, what kind of words come to mind? Very important objects, very valuable objects, uh, very detailed objects, okay? So it's going to be an adjective here. Prashanta says very personal objects. And it's good to think about these words like personal, important, valuable, because then I know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for reflect particular interests. So again here, if I'm looking at kind of the same paragraph, wall hangings, okay. Um, so Tush kids are deeply personal while in the past these tapestries reflected general social interests so again notice how it's kind of like the answers are coming one paragraph after the next in these types of fill-in-the-blank questions now that doesn't mean that the uh, 
that the answer always comes from the next paragraph. It could be coming from the end of this paragraph, so be careful. But in a lot of IELTS exams, it is kind of like paragraph after paragraph, okay? So the best answer here, according to the passage, is personal. They're very personal objects, right? Now, if you think about this, if you're like, well, Adrian, are you sure? Are you 100% sure that it's personal and it's not valuable or something? Yes, I am. And the reason why is because of this part here. If you look at uh, the part that comes after, so a symbol of pride among Kyrgyz people, Tushkiz are very personal object as they reflect particular interest of the couple and what is meaningful to them. What is meaningful to you and your interest is personal, right? BP is saying personal is wrong, but BP, I guarantee you it's not wrong because this part is basically a definition of personal. What is meaningful to you and what is your interest is personal. So BB personal is not wrong. It's definitely the right answer. We have the definition of that answer in the question. Pay very close attention, students, to these kinds of definitions. This helps you to be sure that the answer is personal. Okay? Does everybody see that? Does everybody see how reflect particular interest of the couple and what is meaningful to them is a definition of a personal object. Do you see that? Okay. All right, hopefully you do. Um, okay, so number 31. Another interesting aspect of the Tushkiz is that its symbolism can also reflect something important such as when they include uh, symbolisms associated with the uh, cotton industry. All right, um, this one you should not have to look for. I think it's very clear from the question. Um, uh, okay, uh, Ilham says economic, Minilik says economic. Um, I don't think it's economic. I would not naturally write economic here. Okay, uh, the author explained this, that because the cotton industry is of such economic importance, it becomes something, a part of. That's right, Sunantha. I agree with you. And it's not culture because you have to think about the adjective here. Okay, cultural importance. So it starts as economic, but then it becomes cultural, right? Um, now, you can check this if you're not sure because you have the word cotton industry. Okay, so I'll show you how my mind works. If I'm not sure if it's economic or cultural, if I'm confused by it, I will check, and I remember that uh, examples come at the end of uh, paragraphs, okay? And it's coming in the next one here. And it's here. Uh, however, cultural symbolism is still common. For example, imagery associated with the cotton industry is a common theme. Because the cotton industry was of such immense economic importance, it had taken on cultural importance as well. So the main theme here is not economic importance, but it's cultural importance coming from two parts, cultural here and cultural symbolism. So cultural symbolism, cultural importance. Students always look for the best answer. If you put economic, you will get it wrong. Economic importance becomes cultural importance. So the contents of the tush kiz is cultural importance, okay? All right, so careful, don't, don't look at the information word by word. You have to look at the overall information, okay? All right, um, so um, for decades, the inclusion of the Soviet hammer, this is number 32, and sickle symbol was commonplace on Tushkiz. This showed the couples something for the Soviet rulers. 
Okay, so here I would say the uh, respect, the connection. If I'm not sure 100% here, I would check Soviet rulers. I know it's coming from the next paragraph. Okay, so um, all right, demonstrate one's support for the Soviet regime. Okay, so respect, close, support, right? Okay, so here the correct answer couples support for the Soviet rulers. Okay, nice and fast. Winston, Vijaya, very good. The Chimladik is a special uh, area inside the yurt which is hidden behind a something and in front of the uh, Tush Kiz. This I can search for if I don't remember it because this word is really easy to identify. Okay, so here the bride on the wedding day sits in a Chimladik, a curtained off area inside a special yurt the answer very good jumpsid back curtain that's right see smart cookies out there uh, inside the yurt which is hidden behind a curtain good for you very nice chai and kip uh, Symphonia got it as well. 34. In addition to its usage as the backdrop for the wedding ceremony, the Tushkid also represents a portion of the something brought to the bond by the woman. Mm -hmm. Now this word is going to be tricky, but if you know it, you can answer it without looking at the passage. But I don't know how to spell it, so I'm going to have to look back. Now, if I don't know how to spell a word, I'm going to check it. So I know that the word is a dowry. And in many cultures, you have this in weddings where the bride brings a dowry. It's like um, the value uh, that the family gives uh, to the wedding um, from the bride's side. So it's a dowry. And a lot of you got that. Very nice in the chat. So it's a dowry. Um, it's spelt like that. Again, uh, IELTS does not have spell check, so here I know that it's spelled correctly, but if I don't know, I would find this word and then put in dowry, okay? So if you don't know the word, you could be in trouble, but then you'd have to search for it, okay? So dowry. Number 35, commonly orange and red in color. Tushkid also include patterns on the inside of the tapestry that are something in their detail. Intricate in their detail, okay? Means lots of little details. Uh, this could be a tough one to find um, if I'm looking for it. So I would look for orange and red in color and look for the concept of uh, detail, okay? So uh, here they're quite large, uh, highlighted by orange and red tones, including the outer edge, solid color, uh, palette, and intricate patterned details. Okay, intricate patterned details. That's where it is. All right, um, let's take a look at some multiple choice questions. So um, when um, BP, uh, intricate is complicated. So the word intricate means complicated, but you want to use the word from the passage whenever possible. So using intricate is better than using complicated, okay? BB. All right, um, how many sides of the Tushkiz lack a border? So how many sides do not have a border? A, zero, B, one, C, three, D, four. What's the correct answer? Minalik, Prashanth, 
Nurlita, Shusanta, flower. Very nice. The correct answer is B. One side, the bottom, right? Lacks a border. Lack means does not have. Be very careful. Pay attention to the multiple choice. So the sides do not have a border. The passage actually doesn't say that. The passage says three of the four sides has a border. So they kind of give you the opposite, right? Three of the four sides have a border. So B is the correct answer, right? One side does not have a border. So the best answer here is B. Okay, uh, number 37, what is the main point of the tush kiss? Now the trick and the final trick to multiple choice, okay? is you have to answer this on your own. So you must answer multiple choice questions on your own first and then search, then search uh, for the right answer. Okay. So I think Jose, you were doing this. So if you're still with us, you probably know the answer because we talked about it. Uh, what is the main point of the Tush Kiz? Prashantha says it's the foundation. Baljeet says it's culturally important. It frames the couple. It, it frames their past. And it's kind of like the framing, right, of the couple during the wedding. So it's an aesthetic object. No, that's what it said. It's more than just a, a, an aesthetic object. It's part of the bride's dowry. Not quite. To be a frame for the newly married pair. The correct answer is C. Why do I know that? Because that's the answer I gave. Ah, there's Jose. <laughs> Got it. Jose got it. Jose was like, at C, guys. I read that one. I know about it now. Very good, Jose. Yes, absolutely. It's to be a frame for the newly married pair. That's what it said. It said it's in the background and it's like a picture frame for them during the wedding. That's the main purpose of the... Uh, okay, Jose's having a good laugh about it as well. Right, when you understand it, you understand it, right? So it says the main goal of that is to frame the couple and Jose and I talked about that for like a couple of minutes. So definitely that's what it is. Okay, students, um, if you're having trouble with this, and you're finding these multiple choice questions challenging, read the passage again and again, okay? Practice training your brain to identify information. For a lot of people, the problem isn't reading, it's remembering the information and using the information. And you have to train yourself to that, okay? So question 38, 39, and 40, I will leave these ones for you to answer. So you can see this is 40, this is 38 and 39. Um, you can answer these questions on your own and you can send the answers to my email. I'll show you what that is. This is my email here. And once I have your answers, I will give you the answer key. So I will let you know what those last three uh, answers are. And I want to challenge you to try it on your own now, okay? So remember, multiple choice. Think about the answer on your own, then choose the right answer, okay? All right, so adrian at aehelp.com, send me your answers there. Students, all of this practice and videos and strategies are available from our websites, aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. So check us out on our websites, they are awesome. Um, we are using or we were using academic uh, IELTS for our speaking and we will use this website in the next class coming up in 25 minutes. So make sure to join, check out the premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. 
Um, same thing on the general aisles right there. Uh, we train so many students and people love the, the full course and love all the videos they get. So check it out. It doesn't cost a lot and it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. It supports us. It helps us support you. So check that out. Uh, hopefully I will see all of you in the next class coming up in 25 minutes. That will be speaking part two. We will do a cue card together. We will talk strategy for the cue card, the long part of the speaking section. And some of you will get a chance to practice that uh, part two cue card as well. Thank you, Carolina, for moderating the class. Thank you, um, members, for your support. And thank you, subscribers, for your support. I hope to see all of you in the next class shortly. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out uh, from beautiful Victoria for the next 25 minutes. And then I'll be signing back in and bringing you another live IELTS class. Bye for now.